meeting is the 24th day of November. And uh, Madam Clerk, what's before us? Uh, there's seven items on the regular agenda and two additional items on the special agenda this morning. Okay, let's take the regular agenda first. And item number one is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Erin Pack to the Commission for Children, Youth, and Their Families. Great. And uh, would you please come to the center table? Good morning, Ms. Pack. How are you? So uh, you're uh, being proposed by the mayor? Yes. For children's youth and families? Yes. Great. And how are you today? Fine, Councilman. How are you? I'm all right. Driving a little harder and trying to get things done around here because it's a tough time that we're in. So you're familiar with the, the mission of Children, Youth, and Families and the current challenge of their consolidation? Yes, I believe so. Right. You want to give us a little uh, one minute what's in here that makes you want to help there? Sure. Um, again, my name is Erin Peck. I am the Chief Executive Officer of Korean Health Education Information Research Center. It's a community clinic that we operate. Um, when I was asked by the mayor to consider uh, joining the commission for children, youth, and their families, um, I was quite excited. It's, it is uh, a it is something that is very close to my heart and very close to the work that I do day in, day out, trying to improve the quality of life for the uh, children and families in the um, Los Angeles area. So I feel that I could be um, an asset to the organization. Absolutely will be an asset. I've been to your facility. I know not just the passion of you, but uh, that it permeates through all employees and what cares. Uh, Madam Clerk, when does this come to council? Uh, this morning should Great. be attending. We're going to vote for it. We recommend approval. Thank you. Go get uh, coffee. Do whatever you want. We'll see you in an hour and a half. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Next item, please. Next item is also a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Robert Levy to the Commission on Disability. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Levy. I knew a Robert Levy in West Los Angeles. You ever meet another Robert Levy? If you like him, I'm that other Robert Levy. Oh, well, I like him. <laughs> he lived in the same zip code as yours, I think, close to it. And he also, uh, but he worked with the county for many years. But uh, thank you for your uh, uh, desire uh, to be on a commission. Uh, Mr. Levy, I appreciate your dedication. Uh, you know, it's a very trying time. Tell us a little about your passion. Um, my past is fairly simple. Uh, I was um, a foster child for many years uh, in the San Fernando Valley at McKinley Home for Boys. Uh, when it was um, which you know, home? McKinley Home for Boys. Okay. Before it moved to San Dimas, it right. was where the Sherman Oaks Galleria is. Or right. The mall. I was um, Pacific. What was the one out there on the Topanga? Pacific Boys Lodge. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Too. So I, I grew up uh, as a foster child. Eventually, uh, uh, most of my family passed away. I got adopted at a very late age, which uh -huh. was fine, and went through a name change at that point. I was born Robert Wolf, later became Robert Levy. Uh, I'm a lawyer by profession right. uh, who didn't enjoy practicing law because I felt I was defending poor law, and I wanted to get into the policy area to try and change policy. Uh, I have disabilities, including a hearing disability in both ears. Uh, I have three different forms of cancer, so I have what I call a silent disability. Uh, two years ago, we formed, uh, my family formed the National Foundation for Healthy Communities. Uh, that foundation was established because of the challenges I had with health care. And I felt if I was having challenges knowing the system, how many other people would have challenges? Today, we do outreach programs throughout the United States, going into uh, communities that are challenged with mobile units, doctors, do mammograms. We partner here in L.A. with Shiva's USA so we can get the kids. Uh, so we do a lot of outreach. And this appointment to me is personal in nature as much as it also is good for the city and it's good for me as a resident of the city to donate back to you. Well, I'm excited, Robert, uh, for that. When has this come before the council, Madam Clerk? Also this morning. So you could uh, be rid of the top of City Hall? Yep. Okay, you can go get coffee or go read a book. I'll go, it's too I'll early go for the library to open up. Uh, I need but, some uh, coffee. 
We're going to uh, see you in about an hour and 15 minutes. Thank you very much for your desire to serve the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. I like your story. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, ma'am. Item number three is a report from the Human Services Department relative to a grant to support the young women from adversity to resiliency program. Please. Good morning, Councilman. Jamaica Bell from Human Services. Yeah. I'm actually here requesting your approval to move forward this item. It's the contract from the L.A. County Probation Department, which allows us to operate the YWAR program. How much is the contract worth? It's for $217,000 for nine months of the school year, which is September 1st to June 30th. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, CAO approval? Does the CAO recommend approval? Very good. So ordered. Thank you, sir. Next item. Yeah. Item number four is the LA for Kids Steering Committee report and a resolution relative to initiating proceedings for the 2010-11 Prop K assessment. Good morning, Council Member. Bernice Hollins, Office of the CAO. This resolution satisfies an administrative requirement of the program. It provides authority to staff to prepare the um, Proposition K budget for the next five year cycle. The LA for Kids Steering Committee recommends approval, I'm sorry, adoption of this resolution. Right, and uh, this has been implemented since 1996. 97, 98 was our first program year. Okay, and have we had a 10 year report on everything? Pardon? We had a 10-year report. Um, we're actually currently undergoing a reconciliation of the first 10 years of the um, program. That um, item will be scheduled at the steering committee either at the December or January meeting. And that will come to this committee afterwards? Um, if there are recommendations for um, appropriations or adjustments of the fund, yes, it would. Yeah, but, well, I'd like a report any which way. But Certainly. We'll move this forward. And then uh, in the future, look for that. Look back 10 years, because I know it has made a difference in the lives of many, many people. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So ordered. Yeah. Next item. Item number five is a report from the Los Angeles Department of Aging relative to the acceptance of grant amendments to the fiscal year 09-10 Senior Employment Training Program and Older Californians Act Program. James. Good morning. The Department of Aging is requesting authority. Uh, for the record. James Donald, Department of Aging. The Department of Aging is requesting authority to accept two notice of grant awards from the California Department of Aging. The first ones for our Title V Senior Employment Training Program, which reflects an increase of $189,234. The second notice of award uh, amendment increases our Ombudsman Program by $130,136 but it also includes a, an anticipated reduction of $542,571 to our Order of California Act program. In this program, it states you could do 239 residents. That's correct? That's correct for the Title V program. Uh, is there any way you could maximize this with any work with the, either the community college district or recreation and parks or someone else? I mean, it's very difficult to meet everyone's needs to the limited dollar but right. to be able to look to collaborate with others, maybe you could stretch out the engagement. Sure, we'll, we'll look investigate at that, that. Just to see if there's any way to collaborate. All right. So we'll accept this. CAO of CLA approves it. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you. Item number six. Item number six is a report from the city administrative officer relative to an agreement with Michael Leslie Productions doing business as Ready Golf Centers for the operation of the Sepulveda Golf Complex Professional Concession. Good morning, Council Member. Veronica Salumbidas with the Office of the CAO. Um, the proposed agreement um, is for a term of 10 years with two five-year five year renewal options. Um, it includes the operation of the golf professional shop, the golf driving range, and golf lessons at the Sepulveda Golf Complex. Um, under the terms of the proposed agreement, uh, the concessionaire will pay the city 5% of gross receipts from golf lessons, um, pro shop, and range shop sales. Uh, the concessionaire will also pay the city 25% of gross receipts from the golf driving range uh, up for revenues up to and including $600,000. Uh, for anything above $600,000, the concessionaire will pay the city 60%. Um, 
The revenues from this concession agreement will be deposited into the Recreation and Parks Operating Fund. Um, there is no additional impact on the general fund, and the CAO recommends approval. Thank you very much. We have one car, ten, windship. I run a two-minute public clock unless there's multiple speakers where I run a one-minute. Please take as much time as you need on the two minutes. My name is Ted Winship. I'm a resident of the city of Los Angeles. Uh, I'm head of the uh, Los Angeles um, uh, Golf Advisory Committee. I'm chair of that. I'm president of my Hanson Dam Golf Club, member of the Sepulveda Seniors and uh, other clubs. I'm here because I delivered a letter a copy of the letter that was delivered to the Board of Commissioners of Recreation and Parks. I would ask not that we do away with this uh, proposal to operate the uh, facility out there, but rather I would ask that it be tabled until the Board of Commissioners acts on this matter. Uh, this gentleman, unfortunately, is, in my opinion, unsociable and he does not operate the business in the way because he represents the people of Los Angeles. He represents uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation, uh, Recreation and Parks. And for that reason, I would ask that you just table this thing, let the Board of Commissioners come to their decision, if any, and then go forth. Uh, well, correct me, before it comes to me, it has to go to the Board of Commissioners. The Board has actually rep uh, approved the agreement, the proposal. Right. The, board, so the Board has has approved it, but this matter took place after their approval. Well, I, this is news to me. Could someone please tell me, because uh, I don't understand what you're saying. And I see the golf manager the, here. He, Could someone apply light to this? This gentleman thinks that the process has not been completed by the Board of Recreation Parks Commission. Before an item is scheduled in this office, at this committee, it has to go through the commission. Rob Morales from Recreation and Parks. What Mr. Winship is referring to is a letter from a constituent uh, citing the incident that happened at the pro shop. Um, the matter has been referred to the department and we are investigating that. Um, however, that individual isn't here right now. But he carried the letter down. This is the letter? Right. Okay. Have you seen this letter? Yes, I have. Okay. Do you think it should, do you recommend, and has the CAO seen the letter? No, we haven't. Okay. Is this something that would impede this committee from recommending this to go forward? In my opinion, it's not. Okay. What is this about? It's about an incident that happened between two people who knew each other for a long time at um, the pro shop. They had a few words, mm -hmm. a few things were said. Like I said, they've known each other for a long time, and we are investigating the matter. And I hate to say that it wasn't um, it wasn't a business an individual practice individual to be here to speak against the contract. Say it again. Let me just ask this question here. It wasn't a business practice. It was more of a personal dispute. Yes, in my opinion, at this uh -huh. time, having reviewed that and having to speak with Mr. Brunback about it. Uh huh. I know Mr. More time than, uh, okay. usually get. Mr. Mr. Dobbs worked for the Department of Recreation and Parks for 36 years. Right. He had, obviously, he managed the uh, Sepulveda facility for 17 years. And this had to do with, a, with Mr. Bernbach's uh, objection to Mr. Dobbs speaking in behalf of Kishi. He never said anything against Mr. Bernback, but he spoke in favor of the Kishi operation for the golf carts. And you can't have people, in my opinion, you can't have people threatening <laughs> personnel. The threat now is the police department involved in this? They went to the police department, and the police department said, it, as it is a matter of property and not a person, they would not involve themselves in it until something happened, then they would investigate. Well, uh, uh, Madam CAO, what I do is I recommend approval to go forth to council, but I want a, uh, uh, an addendum from uh, Recreation and Parks on this issue here. Uh, there doesn't seem to be enough facts, not a business practice or anything that may have taken place here. So, Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, Mr. Michael Bernback. Good morning. Good morning, Council Member Michael Bernback. Ready to go? The clock. I'd, li I'd like to go on the record and just try and get this straightened out if we can right now. Um, we've calculated that there's been three and a half million customers and patrons at our facility. There's always a few, and I think you'd understand this as a council member, you can't please everybody. You try to please as many as you can, and we probably have a dozen or so folks over the years, and we've been there now nine and a half years, that are not happy with the way we run our operation, and they want to run it their way. And there's always a few busybodies that get involved in personal disputes that think it's their business. In this particular instance, and I want to go on the record and make it clear, Jimmy and I have been friends for 12 years. We've been Jimmy, Jimmy Dodds, the person in this letter. Right. He and I have gone to many Christmas functions together, spent many times at dinner, et cetera, et cetera. We got into an argument. It was a personal argument. It's since been well resolved. We've seen each other on several occasions and talked at many times since that. But other people, third hand, like to get involved with things that they make their business that has nothing to do with them and has nothing to do with this facility. And it's so ridiculous uh, that um, I just wanted to come forward and state for the record the situation as it really is. Okay, uh, for the record, uh, this is going to be looked at by the Recreation of Parks. I'm going to hand them this letter. Okay, you have a copy of this letter? Yes, we do. And we'll okay, do. and also That's for the record, the gentleman who spoke, Mr. Winship, uh, left the room, didn't uh, care to hear any other discussion on this. So I don't know what it is, but it doesn't appear to be a business practice or a violation of uh, law. I'm looking at Recreation Parks. I'm not looking at you. And so move this forward. Uh, but give me an answer before it comes to council. When's it supposed to be in council? It has not been scheduled. Days? Okay. So it'll be scheduled. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next item. The next item, item number seven, is a report from the city administrative officer relative to an agreement with Richard Williams doing business as Rancho Cienega Tennis Shop for the operation and maintenance of the Rancho Cienega Sports Complex Tennis Professional Concession. Good morning. Emily Maeda from the Office of the CAO. Before you is a CAO report recommending the approval and execution of a contract with Richard Williams doing business as Rancho Cienega Tennis Shop for the operation and maintenance of the tennis professional concession at the Rancho Cienega Sports Complex. The term of the proposed agreement is five years with two five-year options to renew. Under the terms of the proposed agreement, the concessionaire shall pay the city a fixed minimum rent of approximately $5,000 for the first two years, $5,100 the third and fourth years, and $5,250 the fifth year, or 12% of gross receipts from tennis lessons and 15% of gross receipts from shop sales and rentals, whichever is greater. The proposed agreement is in compliance with the city's financial policy. The CEO recommends approval. Very good. Just a question I wanted to ask. If you put uh, Hanson Dam and you put Sepulveda and you put Griffith Park and you put uh, the... Uh, uh, contract that's there before and whatever's in the harbor. Have you ever compared them all across the board? Which one, is there different scales for each facility? No, we haven't. They're all the same? We haven't compared. The well, you should examples. next time, okay? I think it's good to look at everything. I mean, that's what everybody does, try to look at everything, try to make the best decision on that, because I notice the numbers are a little different, but I believe in the CAO's office, and you're from the CAO's office. Yeah. I will recommend approval, but in the future, look at all of them together in some form and gra you know, to see if we're doing the right thing all the way. I don't say that you're not doing the right thing now, but to look at it, sometimes if you see them all, you can look over. Do you ever do that, Mr. Ward? You do that? You know these folks at the CAO's office? You know, so I want to see a little more collaboration that way so you can look at everything. So you would like us to look at, like, the percentages of payments for similar type vendors at different venues? Exactly. Okay. You know, as you cross the board so you see that. Just, just taking into account different facilities. You know, there are some premier golf courses and some premier tennis and some that may be in less. Uh, Not as premier. I got that. You know, but, but there are some that are in economically challenged areas. Not so much golf, but tennis that maybe won't pay quite as much. Understood that, but I think it should be known. You know, I'm not questioning any of those numbers because I realize that, but I think it should be looked at across the board. 
Very good. So thank you so much. Have a good Thanksgiving. Okay, next item. The next item is from the special agenda, and that is a motion, Laban Chan, relative to requesting the Human Services Department and the Commission on the Status of Women to review the guidelines by the United States Preventive Services Task Force indicating that mammograms are not necessary for women younger than age 50 and to report back. Good morning, Chairman Laban. My name is Victoria Mineta. I'm the Women's Advocate for the Human Services Department, Commission on the Status of Women. And that's a very important role. You know, there's a many jobs. There used to be a job here called the city architect, and uh, their job was to speak to issues related to architecture. Yes, sir. One of the first person. Now, your role is to speak to issues related to women, which is very important. So make sure your voice is loud and clear, because this is the first real time as the department's been consolidated that we have a chance to try to capture a, a focus on an issue that's very pressing. That's, very, that's right, and I'm very proud to have this position. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the Human Services Department Commission on the Status of Women does not support the newly released guidelines by the United States Preventive Services Task Force that advocates that women should begin getting mammograms at 50 years of age rather than at 40, and once every two years rather than annually. We join with groups such as the American Cancer Society, the Susan G. Komen Foundation, and others in expressing concern, surprise, and alarm at these new guidelines. We agree with Dr. Otis W. Brawley, who's the Chief Medical Officer of the American Cancer Society, who still supports the Society's stance that women have annual mammograms starting at age 40 because the benefits outweigh the risks of false positives. He said the Society reached that conclusion after its experts looked at the same data reviewed by the task force. We agree with Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius when she calls mammograms an important life-saving tool in the fight against breast cancer. She advocates, and we agree, that women keep doing what you've been doing for years. Talk to your doctor about your individual history, ask questions, and make the decision that is right for you. A potential impact of these new guidelines includes women not detecting breast cancer until it is too late. If you catch breast cancer early, there's a 98% survival rate. Another impact, potentially, is that women will have a false sense of security, not thinking that they need to get these breast examinations until age 50. The Human Services Department would like to call attention to the fact that currently only one-third of the women who qualify for screening under today's guidelines are not being screened due to lack of access, education, or awareness. For African-American women, this is particularly urgent because too few African-American women are getting annual mammograms and breast screenings under the rules that exist today. Additionally, with the African-American population facing diagnoses at younger ages, getting screened early is critical. It is our position that mammography is not perfect, but it is still the best tool for early detection and successful treatment of this disease, and current guidelines should remain in place. That's a very great statement. I thank you. Uh, I'm going to just check, uh, Madam Clerk. We're going to, uh, you know, I could call for more testimony, but I think we should get our voice out sooner. And I think there's consensus, uh, especially uh, in talking to my wife, who's a cancer survivor and has been through it and was discouraged from getting a mammogram and only to find out she had stage four cancer at one period and recovered. Consequently, uh, it's just shocking that you have this group, which I'm not for sure of. I know what the CDD is. You know what the CDD uh, out of Atlanta, the, uh, for the... Center for Disease Control. Yeah. Yes. There's one voice that I want to hear. I don't want to hear a hundred voices from the government. I could deal with one voice in that sense that this is what we vet it. You know, but all of a sudden all these new task forces of these groups I've never heard of are expressing this. Also, I find it somewhat uh, coincidental that it's expressing it during the time of the debate about health care. All that being said, anxiety, you have anxiety every day, and I'd rather have the anxiety and, and, and get past the finish line than not have the anxiety and fail to get past the finish line, whatever the, the, the day's race is. With that being said, uh, I'm going to pick a time that we schedule, coordinated with your office, Very good. to get you and other loud voices there together to make a statement that Los Angeles strongly believes it's the wrong decision to make and uh, to encourage people and find a way. I did have a healthy discussion with uh, 
someone over the issue of mammograms in the sense of you know how sometimes you go to a community fair and there's someone there like the Lions Club, they do eye tests or something. And the doctor was explaining to me sometimes, you know, I started to reach out to more because more people, you know, you get the opportunity to have a test, the better you know. That all being said, there's a way that can or can't be done and we've got to do it right, but I don't think we should say wait 40 to 50 at all. It doesn't, and even, even much more awareness for female, uh, it needs to be done. So we could schedule this possibly uh, within the next week. Is that possible? It can go any time uh, after next Wednesday, December 2nd. That okay, we'll the coordinate time. the time and maybe the Very following good. week. But we could have a council and make a, a very loud statement. The Los Angeles believes this is absolutely wrong. Thank you very much. Thank Please you. make a copy of that for us and work with Ms. Schechter in my office. Thank you so much. It's very good to meet the advocate and the staff. All right. Madam Clerk, next item. The next item is a motion, Labange Alicon Gassetti, relative to requesting the Department of Recreation and Parks with the assistance of Film LA to report on the department's process to assist and facilitate film productions at city parks and facilities. Good morning, Council Member. My name is Mark Carbon. I'm the manager of the Park Film Office for the Recreation and Parks Department. Uh, the Park Film Office is located in the old Adobe at Griffith Park, and we have a staff uh, of four full time and five part time film coordinators. We also have 110 film monitors. The Park Film Office is committed to providing. 110 film monitors? Yes, sir. Are they city employees? Are they part time employees, or what are they? They're city employees. Uh, approximately 50 of those uh, monitors are part time that are hired specifically and trained to be film monitors, on site monitors. And do they include the, rangers? The remainder are full-time employees that uh -huh. are rangers, park maintenance supervisors, senior gardeners, gardeners, and water utility staff. Got it. The Park Film Office is committed to provide the film industry with high-quality, economically feasible film locations. The taxpayers in the city of Los Angeles have fair return of their resources and to preserve parklands for the use of future filmmakers and residents. What the Park Film Office does is provide information and create reservations that result in film permits. We provide staff to meet and confer with location managers on proposed film sites. We write guidelines for each film permit that is issued. And we partner with Film LA on a daily basis, both with each of their film coordinators as well as their supervision and senior staff. What we've done since the we have attended the film ad hoc committee meetings that are hosted by the CAO's office, and that includes all departments, location managers, and Film LA. Uh, Recreation and Parks Film Office has made two presentations, and we also handled all the questions and answers that were presented. We updated the laparks.org website to include the process, rates, and fees, and basic guidelines to film in the parks. If a location is not available, for filming, the staff will provide alternative sites to the location managers. This is something that we've done, but we've provided even more focus to that. Any permissions not given for filming in the parks or recreation centers are given to myself to review and see if it can be worked out so it can be approved. Ongoing training with our film monitors with fo focus on customer ser service skill development, and we continue with our quarterly me meetings with Film LA. Repeat the last line. We, we have quarterly yeah. meetings with Film LA. We have right. ongoing meetings. Well, this is not something new, but we do meet with Film LA on a right. quarterly basis. And that would be our assistant general manager, myself, the office manager, and other staff. At, uh, What's Alabama the most LA. film park location in the city? Well, Griffith Park would actually. In be, Griffith Park, what's in the Griffith? Most? It would be either Park Center or Vista, Vista mm -hmm. Dubai. Right, Vista Dubai. Uh, if you would sit at the table, please. We have a representative from uh, Con uh, Councilman Richard Alicone, who has uh, led the effort on trying to help uh, encourage filming in Los Angeles. And if uh, you could identify yourself and your position for the record, and then uh, make a statement on behalf of the council member. 
Great. Thank you, uh, Chairman. My name is Becca Doten. I'm the Communications Director for Councilmember Richard Alarcone, CD7. And I'm here um, uh, sending the regrets for Councilmember Alarcone, who is stuck in traffic right now. <clears throat> On his way um, to the committee, he was hoping to be here to support your efforts here uh, regarding filming in Los Angeles. As you know, he's extremely passionate about the idea of ensuring that we keep filming in Los Angeles and look at ways to expand it. And um, he, first of all, I want to commend you for introducing this motion uh, and bringing it to your committee. One of his uh, issues is that he's hoping that all the council members will follow your lead and look at opportunities to bring in general managers and bring in different departments who have filming uh, issues that are under their purview so that each of the council members can engage in this dialogue in their committees. And so he um, will be sending a letter to different council members um, commending what you're doing here and hoping that other council members will do that as well. Also, as you are probably aware, he introduced um, a made recommendations on 19 different um, items that the council could do to help move forward uh, filming in Los Angeles. The council, um, I believe, is October uh, 7th that they approved these. Of those, two of them did deal with recreation of parks, and from that point, he has met with General Manager John Muckrey as well to discuss filming in uh, rec and parks locations with his eye towards looking for opportunities to ensure that people have the information they need so that they can easily film in locations that they have the guidelines available for them. So um, briefly, uh, I just, again, wanted to send his um, appreciation for what you're doing here, the working, uh, moving forward and looking at opportunities for all the general managers to find ways to um, set goals for filming so they can help improve the system. I know the mayor has also sent that directive to the general managers at a meeting, and the council member looks forward to working for uh, with each of the departments uh, in his committee and in the various committees regarding filming. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you both. Uh, we have two public comments cards. We'd like to have Chris Lieb and Bernadette Soder. Chris passed to you, Bernadette. So, did. Bernadette Soder first. I'd be first, all right. Hi, uh, my name is Bernadette Soder. I'm with the Greater Griffith Park Neighborhood Council, and I'm chair of the uh, Parks Committee. Um, filming is part of the natural rhythm and the ongoing history of Griffith Park. The film industry is part of the Griffith Park community. I'd like to first say thank you and let Mark know that I want to thank the film crew that caught my two Labrador retrievers who had escaped through a hole in our fence in our backyard last Thursday stopped filming and held them for us, called us, and we came and got them. That was above and beyond. I appreciate that they did that, and that does show that they are part of our general community. Um, the Rec and Parks Department's budget has experienced deep and debilitating cuts. The budget pays for facilities, for programs, and maintenance in our parks. Facilities and programs can hold steady or contract during trying financial times and then roar back later when the economy rebounds. However, Griffith Park's green and natural infrastructure is growing things that are the chief attractant to filmmakers can be irrevocably lost through fire, through drought, and through lack of funds for simple maintenance and restoration. This is simply a request to you, Tom, and to the City Council that you consider the possibility of taking a portion of the daily film permit fee paid by production companies in parks like Griffith Park that have at-risk landscape and deposit into a special maintenance account that can be used for the restoration and maintenance of the park's natural areas, which are, in effect, a large outdoor soundstage. This would serve the long-term interests of both the film industry and Griffith Park, and I'm hoping that this might be something that could be considered as this dialogue goes forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Lee. Good morning, Councilman LaBonge. I'm curious if you got to hike this morning with such an early call to your meeting. No, I did. I got ah, beautiful. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Chris Labe. I'm the co-chair of the Parks Committee for the Los Feliz Improvement Association, and uh, I have a statement that uh, comes from our board of directors. The Los Feliz Improvement Association is the homeowners association adjacent to Griffith Park, representing over 1,000 households. We strongly encourage the City of L.A. to assign filming fees generated in city parks to the Department of Recreation and Parks. Particularly in this fiscal climate, it is imperative that the city keep the parks in conditions that will render them desirable to location scouts and filming entities. These extra funds will assist the Department of Recreation and Parks to do just that. To not do so will threaten a viable and growing revenue stream for the city. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, with the interest of this issue, I'm going to continue this matter because I want uh, Mr. Alicone to be here. I want my colleagues to be here because there's other parts of the city. I also want to ask the Department of Recreation and Parks uh, to look at all facilities. I think it's imperative. The suggestion here uh, is a good suggestion, but it may be counterintuitive to what our issue is in trying to get the 250,000 uh, ready and able employment base, which is the film industry, back online away from the Carolinas, away from Michigan, away from other states that have been over backwards. But at the same time, there should be a way to say, uh, if you're doing this, we want you to know if you're coming to this park that this money would go directly to the Conservation Corps or the Nursery Rehabilitation Program. Give them an option. I don't like to put my shoulder on anybody to ask them for anything, but I certainly want to encourage them. Uh, you uh, know that, so I think it's something we could discuss at a further date. And uh, we're going to continue this matter th uh, 30 days. I also would like to have some community discussion on this to see if there's other ideas as well. But I certainly thank you both for coming down. Madam Clerk. That completes the items on the agenda this morning. Okay. I thank you, everybody. I wish you all a good and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.